Hi everybody. Um, my name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a targeted individual. For those of you who don't yet know what a targeted individual is, it is uh, someone who, for by whatever means, dubious means, and for whatever purpose, have been selected for torture, no touch torture, uh, Morgellons, gang stalking, uh, MK Ultra type mind control, gaslighting, uh, covert drugging with LSD and other hypnotic and other drugs, uh, basic remote neural monitoring and mind control, trying to get you to do things you wouldn't ordinarily do, like you know, shooting up a school or whatever, you know, uh, burning down the building, killing your loved ones, anything, anything they can get you to do. <sighs> um, uh, I haven't made a lot of videos recently because I've been so sick. These people uh, with their remote high frequency ear stress and the sickness that it causes and the, you know, it makes me vomit and, and all that. Um, recently, the problem we're having now is with, again, with our home life. Uh, it's very interesting. We are quiet. We don't even have a, a stereo. We don't even have a stereo hooked up. We used to have a recording studio. Now we don't even have a stereo hooked up. I have a laptop with a, a little tiny speaker hooked to it that we watch television out of. So we don't make music noise uh, we have uh, no friends so basically we don't see anyone occasionally maybe one person will stop by once a month you know for five minutes we don't see anyone so it's not like we have a lot of guests coming and going and um, thank God thank you Lord thanks to God we we pay our rent on time Every time, first of the month, no questions asked, plop, here you go. Um, we pay the electric bill. You know, we pay our bills. Uh, we stay out of their way. We share the kitchen and the, the bathroom. We stay out of their way as much as we can, you know. Uh, we try not to even go in there, you know, now, because they're being so horrible to us. Um, when we moved in, with these nice nice people we were very clear uh, that A I smoke cigarettes B we have a cat uh, and C we want to be able to stay here for more than just a few months that if you're planning on leaving or putting us out after a few months we don't want to move in we said that like ten times and they said no no you stay as long as you like no problem so we'd like to stay here at least a year, if not longer. You know, we, we don't want to move again. We've just been forced to move ten times in the past three years. And we'd like to not do it again. No, no, no problem. So everything's going along fine. And then I guess the landlord who owns the building, his name is Joseph Fragella or something, saw that this neighborhood was becoming gentrified and that uh, the landlords, the mostly Hasidic Jewish landlords, but all kinds of landlords are buying up all the buildings that, like this one, that people were living in for 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 a month, and, you know, putting in some new plaster and paint and charging 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 a month, whatever the market will bear. And the white people and the, the not-so-poor people who are getting pushed out of... Uh, the other areas, I just talked to the guy downstairs who's living in an apartment, same as this one. He's paying 1500 a month. Um, he said he got pushed out of Greenpoint, out of, out of Williamsburg, out of somewhere else, uh, and now he's here and he's getting pushed out again. So the landlords are seeing that the dollar signs, bing, 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 flashing in their eyes. So when the guy downstairs on the first floor moved out, he ripped out the whole apartment and just to the brick still like that they haven't finished it yet <clears throat> downstairs in the basement they put in a new boiler um, he's trying to fix the sewage the raw sewage that's been leaking from the toilets into the basement every day uh, going in a little river down to a hole hasn't fixed that yet but he's starting to they dug up the basement 
We looked him up. He borrowed a hundred thousand dollars off the mortgage on this building, probably to fix it up, because he figures he's going to get people in here. He's going to raise the rent. He's going to get fifteen hundred, two thousand, twenty-five hundred a month. And hey, let's get rid of all the people paying eight hundred, nine hundred, eleven hundred. So he's got the super being friends with the other people. The guy that that we rent from is Spanish, and I guess he's just not too bright, although he thinks he's bright. I, I don't know. Maybe the super's got him fooled. He's got this smile on his face, and he lie to you and smile. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and lie. And just tell you anything you want to hear. Lie, lie, lie. So he told them, their lease was almost up. He said, oh yeah, you move out for two months. You go stay in the room. You put your stuff in the basement. And, and we're going to fix up the house. We're going to rip out the wall over here. We're going to move the take that, the, this over here. We're going to put the bathroom in this room over here. And, and we're going to do this over there. And then you come back and you can move right in. It will be beautiful. And we told them, don't do it. What are you, crazy? They're going to throw you out. They're going to move somebody else in. They're going to double the rent. This guy doesn't care about you. So the whole thing, you know, he's got some kind of misplaced loyalty with this guy. He thinks he's, you know, because the guy, the super said to him, Oh, let's get the riffraff out of here. You and me are good people, but everybody else is no good. So let's get them out of here. Little does he know, this guy wants him out of here too, you know. So because they're either afraid or... I don't know, whatever it is, something. As soon as that happened, then he told us, we got to leave. We said, we got to leave? You know, after you told us we could stay here for as long as we needed to? Fine, if we got to leave, we got to leave. We're going to need a few months to, to find a place and try to save up enough money. Well, we don't even have enough money to move. We're living hand to mouth right now. The only reason we were able to move here from the last place is because the daughter needed to move in back home because she moved in with some jerk boyfriend who's whatever they were, leches or something, I don't know. And the, the mother wanted the kid to move back in, so we said, of course, we're going to move out for your family to move in, you know. And they were very nice. They let us have two months rent free. That was a thousand bucks. That's the only way we could have afforded to move here now. You know, these people are pushing, squeezing everything. They squeeze so tight, <coughs> the watchers. <coughs> uh, it's my belief. Well, anyway, so the, the guy and his wife and his daughter were saved from losing their apartment. I talked to my, my counselor. She said, this is happening all the time. I have two clients this happened to. They told them, oh, yeah, move out and put your stuff in the basement. When you come back, we'll have it all painted and fixed up. And they came back, and somebody else is living there. you know. And there's a lease, so there's nothing they can do. They were tricked. And if you're stupid enough to get tricked, what are you going to do? You can take them to court. You know? Possession's nine-tenths of the law. You're out. Sorry, buddy. So... uh I guess he doesn't realize that we, by us telling him, don't do it, don't give up your apartment. Whether we live here or not, don't give up your apartment. And I guess him, he doesn't realize that we saved his bacon, you know? I don't know what he thinks, man. This guy is like all macho and, you know, he's, he's yelling at me because I, I yell at them. You know, the guy tells me we gotta leave, then he bangs on the door and drags us in the other room and starts yelling us about an electric bill that clearly says on it, this bill is for two months, and the b bill is double. He's like, the bill is double, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, man, it says right here, this is for two months, and he's still going on and on and on and on and on. Finally, I'm like, this is, this is bullshit. I started yelling at him. You're telling us to move, and you want to suck more money out of us? No way. And so from then on, now they're like afraid of me or something. He wants to call the police every time I open my mouth. Um, still, during that altercation, he stood in front of me and wouldn't let me get out the door. My wife had to say, let Timothy out the door. He was blocking me from leaving the room, even though I was clearly I was losing it. And these watchers had zapped me with this anger thing, you know, I get, I'm already traumatized from all the gang stalking and the drugs and the mind control and the zapping and the almost dying and the, the alien parasites and all the other Morgellons and the crazy shit, and I'm trying to remain calm, but, you know, when people violate my human rights over and over and over again, I mean, first you fight for yourself, then you fight a little less, 
and you fight a little less, and eventually you're stuck, you know, pulling the sheet over your head and going, please, please don't hurt me, please, please don't hurt me, just leave me alone, all I want to do is have a life, please. I mean, that's where they're getting, that's what they're doing to us, you know, they're pushing us this, this far. There was a woman in the hotel where we lived where they were, you know, they were hooked in there, man. The, the NSA, CIA, hybrid alien crazy make the world into a new world order by targeting people. People were so thick in that place. We had videos of them running around in the halls with gas masks on and, and all kinds of crazy shit. Of course, they stole the video out of the phone and put water in it. But there was a woman, a poor black woman, she lived downstairs from us. And she was walking around just like that, all hunched up. Curled over, uh, and you couldn't. You say hi to her. She, ah, oh, the white man is the devil. I mean, she, she, she was gone, man. They drugged her so hard, she died. Uh, not long after that, of quote unquote a heart attack, natural causes, whatever. They scared her to death. They drugged her, and they terrified her, and they scared her to freaking death. And at the time, I didn't know what was going on. I thought so. I was still living in the normal world, you know, like where people don't do shit like that and <laughs> and mental illnesses you know but uh they did this crazy stuff to us man they tried they tried to make Petra seem insane they tried to make me seem insane then they tried to get me to kill her trying to get me to burn down the building trying to get me to kill myself trying to get me to kill you know and and they almost had me they almost had me with this hypnotic programming, you burn down the building so no one else can, they can't do it to anyone else. Yeah, the guy wanted the insurance money. I wasn't the only one. Somebody else, the other woman I knew, that, that when she was looking at the building, I told her, don't move in here. Whatever you do, don't move in here. But I guess she was already a target, so she moved in there, and sure enough, they did the same shit with her. They were leaving big open cans of kerosene in the hallway, telling her, burn down the building. But uh, she didn't do it either. I told her, don't do it. They're trying to get you to do something horrible. And <clears throat> I think that that's sort of what's going on here, is that they're trying to get everybody to do horrible stuff. You know, this evil is, is rampant. Um, one of my experiences when we were in the hotel, besides the technology and, and the people uh, sort of, like they had teleportation or something, reaching in the room and taking things, and and people were there. You could feel the heartbeat, but there was nobody. You couldn't see anybody and and stuff like that. Uh, I believe they have some kind of stealth teleportation wormhole technology that they're working with, um, among other things. <clears throat> the Morgellons is a is a nano assembling. Uh, organism, it's DARPA made it, it's an unkillable thing because it's not alive, it's a delivery system, it's a nano assembler, and among other things, it does a biogenesis where you just put the, the DNA of a certain creature and in this biogenesis with the gene changing technology, these things can actually hatch and live and come out of you as a full grown uh, thing. Not only that, I think I don't know why they're combining these two things because if you use the Morgellons and it was just for the nano assembling of the radio parts, carbon nanotubules, taking the iron out of the hemoglobin in your blood, making iron three out of it, um, you know, it's it's using it as as magnetic. Uh, it's using the stuff inside your body, the minerals, the calcium, the 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 blood whatever it, it it's capable of taking things apart on an atomic level uh, on a molecular level and building things and from what i've seen coming out of people glowing crystalline objects uh metal objects and stuff i've seen coming out of me and inside of me i believe that we're in the field of synthetic biology where a biological entity or organism is created from other life forms to do a particular job or set of jobs, and this one, Morgellons, is a is like an erector set. You know, it's designed to go into the human genome or any other genome and plug itself onto it, adding an extra set of chromosomes and uh, leaving an open chromosomal area where you can plug more chromosomes in. 
um, because you need certain genes in you in order for insects to hatch out of your skin. There's a very particular gene that allows that. There's a patent for it. You can look it up. <coughs> um, and for all of these functions, they're... Uh, anyway, uh, so now I'm living in um, in fear again, you know? It's like... You live in a place and you know you can't do anything, you can't build anything, you can't set anything up because you're going to have to move out. So why bother? You know, when we moved in here, the first thing they did is they somebody came, one of the watchers and threw some more of that shit in here. These little creatures, they're like little tiny little flitty. You can't even see them, but they flit or jump all over you. Flit, 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 flit. And they go into you. You know, more and more gallons. It was probably just an upgrade. An upgrade to the technology, you know. They threw that shit in here and there's this biofilm that grows all over everything. Everything we touch has this slimy biofilm that grows on it. But, uh, we don't tell the people that we move in with that we've had more gallons and stuff. Um, Thank God we don't have stuff shooting out of us right now, but and we've been very good. Nobody else has caught it that I know of. I mean, you know, my belief is that some of these things are genetically tagged. I think the things they used on us were specifically genetically tagged for me and for her. DNA one, DNA two. Um, uh, oh, the thing I wanted to talk about this this evil thing, this demonic thing. One of the experiences that I had in the hotel, along with everything else, um, because they were doing the mind control, they were talking into my head, they were trying to make me not believe that it was real, but believe it was real and get me to kill myself or whatever else. So, <clears throat> there was one experience where something came to me, some entity. And see, the thing is, they were doing this avatar like stuff where, you know, Petra and I are making love and it feels like there's somebody plugged in along with you, you know, like they're riding along, seeing the world through your eyes and feeling your sensations because they got a thing that plugs onto their brain too and hooks them in, although it's probably optically isolated so you can't fry their brain with your brain if you have a more psi power or something, you know. But you could feel it, you could tell, and it changed your perspective. You were almost not quite bilocating or, or body image change, but almost you could feel it, you could tell, and the other person was, was using their energy too to drive it. And you could tell, she could tell, I could tell, we both talked about it, it was obvious. There were other people riding along with us, having sex through us. In fact, the woman at the bank came up and shook my hand. She said, oh, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Uh, how are you? Uh, and she started talking with her co-worker. I had never been bowling before, and, and it was so much fun. I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope we can do it again. And, and he's like, yes, wasn't bowling so much fun? These people are crazy, man. There's some really crazy stuff going on. Uh, anyway, there's that, you know, there's the, the them trying to get into your head and run you like a, like a robot, you know, and if you take, give them, give you enough drugs and, and blow your mind, they can sort of push your spirit aside a little and you're like, bleep, 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 bleep. well, they take over, you know, and I think that, uh, some of these school shootings and crazy crimes are, are just that, these people that have been put on this crazy drug, and, you know, they're doing the gaslighting thing, the voice to skull, and the pressure, 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 and not letting them know that there's a, a covert counterintelligence program monitoring every breath, every heartbeat, every neuronal, you know, uh, evoked potential, <clears throat> seeing everything they see, hear, think, and dream, and anyway, along with those experiences, which are the common uh, technological mind control experiences, the remote viewing, the 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 uh, bilocation, that the stuff that happens spontaneously when you're hooked into this system, or you're given all these. Anyway, on top of that, there was this period where this thing came one time, this entity, and said, "I want to get in," and me being weakened, beaten down, and like. Uh, in shock, you know, not knowing what's next, said, fine, all right, now what, you know? Little did I know that I should have said, 
Uh-uh. I don't care who and what you are. You're not getting in. So this thing came inside of me and sort of pushed me aside. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like looking at myself and this thing goes... Oh, this feels so good to be in a body again. I want to smash and kill and break and... and and I'm like, hey, wait, and it's like, shut the fuck up, Timothy, you little piece of shit. You're nothing, you blah, 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 blah. It's going on and on and on. And I start fucking, oh. So this thing had me, had control of me, and it almost made me do something horrible to someone that I love. And instead of doing the horrible thing, I said to myself, no. I love this person, and I refuse to do anything to harm them. And then this thing went, <laughs> and like, I lost it for a while and started babbling all this nonsense, and uh, I was very confused, and and uh, I was... Petra said that when this happened, my breath changed from this sweet, smelling Timothy that she knew to this horrible, stanking odor of disgustingness, and I was like, Rah! and uh, then it left. We pushed it out somehow. She prayed. She, she, she was the, you know, the, the lion tamer with the chair in front of her, like, no, Timothy, remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember what you love. You know, keep Back to your center. She, she had gave me a mantra that I was using. You know, love under will. And remember who you are. And return to your center. And uh, it was a few other things that I was using that were effective. See, they had made me say that I didn't believe in God. They had made me say it. And they had made me somehow think that it was true even though I was praying the whole time dear God what's going on can you help me please you know forgive me for my sins and and show me what you know I, I somehow they made me say it and it was integral to their plan because you you got to make somebody not believe in God or the afterlife or or any kind of justice and weighing of of actions that that you know responsibility or even karma all that stuff has to be wiped away if you want somebody to change from being a essentially a good person to being a homicidal maniac um I remember the moment, and and may God forgive me. I, I, you know, this stuff is that powerful. I'm telling you, it can change your belief structure. There are people who are, uh, God forbid, uh, I'm sorry, but they seem to be people who are either so far gone, or have been so. Uh, you know, who knows what they're doing to the rest of the population. I know they're beaming these beams on us all. We're all bathed in, in microwave, uh, cell phone radiation, and, and, and Wi-Fi radiation. If you want to do an experiment, take a plant and put it in the sun next to your Wi-Fi router. And put the router on and let it run. Put the plant right next to the antenna and let it see what happens in a week or two. You know, make sure it has enough sun, enough water, and uh, just see what happens. That plant is not going to be happy. I had one die within uh, three or four days, just completely die. Uh, if you could hear what the Wi-Fi router sounds like, it sounds like... And it's sending out these frequencies, in these microwave frequencies that are like very similar to, close to, or harmonics of uh, not only your brain, but of water. You know, the temperature, the, the frequency that vibrates water and creates friction, the 1.2 whatever gigahertz or something up to about 2 point something gigahertz. And uh, the thing about water that's really important is water is, is one of the most miraculous things you're ever going to find. Um, Water is about 70-something percent of us, and water covers about 70-something percent of the planet. And uh, if you look in your cells, there's a lot of water in there. In fact, you could say basically that we're 
bags of water uh, with this divine spark that holds it all together and makes it go. We are are a lot of water in us and salts of course which change the water and all these chemical reactions but water has a memory water has a memory effect this is why homeopathy works people don't understand homeopathy and in our culture the American Medical Association which is only there to take our money and anyway they say homeopathy is not real medicine well here's how it works water if it's pure and clean and charged with the sun and alive okay real water is is has a vibrant cosmic energy of life in it and when you take a tiny 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 grain of some substance be it a plant substance which usually homeopathy is a organic plant substance that we know affects the body in a certain way. This tiny, tiny bit, a bit that is so tiny that it shouldn't affect a human being if they were to take it. And you take this tiny bit and you put it into water. And the water has a memory effect and it vibrates along with and at the frequency of the plant material that you put inside of it. And it affects the water as though the water is charged with the vibration of the plant material that you put in it. And then you drink that water, and that water goes into all your cells, and that vibration of that material affects you just as if you had taken the stuff. Now, granted, it's a small dose, and it takes a while to build up, but it works. They use it on pets, they use it on people. It's good medicine. What we're finding out about humanity and and medicine and and things like that is that it's vibrational based that we are held together you know by by vibration by this field this uh, a particular vibrational pattern a highly complex fractal pattern our DNA uh, is this intense computer that somehow stores the information that you know the vibrational information and probably other information in a code uh, and creates these fields these bio fields around itself that hold these levels of information sort of backup copies of of ourselves and supposedly this information is somehow quantumly non-local you know that this this information isn't actually kept in the genes so much as it's kept somewhere else you know when the the electrons flash out and come back or the quarks or whatever and they, and they say where's it going we can't tell where it is at any time it seems to be going somewhere else and coming back quantum non-locality the information in in our biofield seems to be also a quantum non-locality if we're to believe the science that I've read um, I'm getting way off topic here but uh Anyway, the thing about the, the, the demonic possession, um, I, I didn't believe in this stuff. Uh, you know, I was raised as a Christian or a Catholic, and granted, the evil ones have, have gotten into and tried to change everybody's opinion about religion because they want a secular order where they can be gods and, you know, uh, and we don't give our worship or understanding to our true creator who actually is there holding our hand and and giving us this beautiful planet and you know I mean the arguments that some of these scientists make about about uh, I don't know they try to make creationism into this ridiculous thing and I really do believe that if you look I don't believe I know if you look in nature, you look at yourself, you look at a plant, you look at a tree, you look at a, a rock, you look at the you know at the stars, you look at your cells, you look at the universe in which we live, and you will see the hand of the artist who made it. It's there in the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, in the sacred geometry. These are all pointing towards the same 
thing that somewhere there's this something, someone, intelligence that created all this stuff, that made it. Um, I think that uh, as targeted individuals, we... See, it took me a while. I couldn't figure out why... Uh, why am I a targeted individual? Why are they spending 14 million dollars to chase me around and put things in my brain and, and and read my thoughts and try to get me to do bad things and and all the other experimental stuff of watching me like a TV show and riding me like a fuck bunny and everything else? Why? I'm nobody, you know. I, I, I'm nothing. But you see, that's the thing that I'm wrong about. When I look. When I really look back on my life and with conscious awareness and I sort of see through all the the emotional experiential stuff that happened when the things that I'm looking at happened that caused me to feel about it a certain way and remember it as a certain experience. When I look beyond that stuff and try to see the other people's motivations and what really happened and start connecting the dots through time. I begin to realize that there's a pattern here and that these people have been A, manipulating me, B, standing in my way, stumbling me, you know, like a stumbling block. When they found out that I was good at things, they made sure I couldn't do those things. You know, anything, any time that I've excelled in something, there's always been somebody there to fire me or tell me I'm not worth it or worthy or these people had me believing after all these years of <laughs> psychotherapy and and mind control and hypnotic you know visits to the dentist office where they give you sodium pentothal and knock you out and and then you start having weird dreams that change your life, you know, like, come on, man, this is MK Ultra stuff they were doing to me my whole freaking life. And if any of these stories are true about, you know, listen, there are people who are, are fairly good at astral travel, and they're able to look back in time and see experiences that happened, and in forward in time and see the possibility of events. Uh... There's scientific studies done that a human being, like we have a computer and we have a bunch of pictures in it and you're sitting there with these things on your head being measured, right? And the computer is about to show you a picture of something sad. You don't know what the picture is yet. You haven't seen it. And before the picture shows you, before the computer shows you the picture, your brain starts reacting and you start to become sad. And then they show you the picture, and you see the picture and the content, and it has the emotional effect, and you get sad. They do it again with a picture that's happy. Same thing. Before they show you the picture, uh, like a fraction of a second before, your brain and your body starts reacting to the content, the emotional content of the picture. Over and over and over, they have proved that people have a uh, very short precognition, emotional precognition. Have you ever had a feeling and then somebody knocks at the door and you knew that that was what was going to happen, you know? Or when you think about somebody and there they are, come on, man, this is all because we are somehow quantumly entangled. We are, as much as it sounds weird, we are one. Although we are separate, like snowflakes, we are all made of the same thing, water. You know what I mean? It's like we're connected and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is <clears throat> as we look through our eyes and our ears and hear and smell and taste and touch the outside world the, the stuff out there that's not us you know it comes in through our senses say our eyes ears nose mouth whatever skin and goes through this wiring and goes to the brain and the brain interprets it and says what is it let me make a map of it. Okay, do I recognize this? I can put it over here in this part of the map. Do I not recognize it? This is something new. And put it over here in this part of my map of the world. So, you know, so there's uh, like this map of the world, and we look around, and that's how we can walk around without sort of noticing things and just sort of think we're we're connected to the world, but we're actually just living in this map that we're making in our mind. And there's that disconnect between 
the outside world, reality, whatever that is, whether it's a holographic simulation created through God in our consciousness, or whether it's just, you know, whatever, whatever it is, that stuff out there that isn't us, although it actually is, but it isn't us, and we're trying to make sense of it, you know, we're looking through this map, and that fractional moment of processing and recognition in the brain there's something that we miss. I only know this because once, once in my life was I gifted to experience. Uh, I was playing the guitar. I was trying to practice a particular pattern of notes that was atonal and repetitive, and I had been doing it for about a half an hour. And I had been doing it for so long that I could almost do it without thinking about it. And as I'm doing this thing, Pray, playing these notes, my ego, the part of my mind that interprets, the part of my mind that compares, that says, wow, this is nice, this is not nice, this is fun, this isn't fun, what is this, where are we going, what are we doing, and why, la da 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 all that stuff, the ego part, you know, the part that never shuts up, uh, shut up for a moment, because I was... Uh, concentrating fully on that, but I didn't need to concentrate fully on that because my body memory, the training of my fingering, my body memory took over and was able to play that thing, so my mind, for a moment, stopped uh, paying attention to that and stopped thinking altogether, stopped babbling, stopped comparing, stopped whatever. Guess what happened? The world as it is now was sort of still there. But it was like the scales fell away from my eyes. Augenschein. I could see. And I saw the world that I was in, the room, the chair, the outside. I could see every molecule of air, every breeze, every sound, every bird, every car, every person, every tree, and me all vibrating together as one. And somehow, I was connected to everything and everyone else. That I was part of everything and everyone else. And it was quite an astonishment. Uh, it was so astonishing uh, that I said the part of my mind, the ego that compares and contrasts, and, and it said, wow! this is really neat and of course bloop, it's gone and I'm back into the, the see the world it comes through I make a map and I think this is reality I don't believe that it was just some hypnotic trance I, although it has comparison to the trance state can be used for many things it can be used to fool and program the brain or it can be used to quiet down the blah 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 and allow the the higher self, the true you, the part that isn't the blah 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 blah, to actually see, to be and see. Now, personally, that experience was life changing for me, um, and I've been trying ever since to get it back. Unfortunately, I have never re experienced it. Uh, Despite my many years of practice at meditation, I have never been able to get there. Uh, and this mind control makes it harder. One of the things that I kept thinking was that if I could meditate, if I could stop the blah, 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 perhaps the mind controllers with their blah, 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 wouldn't be as effective. Because that's what they're doing. They're like tapping into my line, you know, I'm having a phone call with my ego, blah, 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 and and my higher self is paying attention, you know, and my ego is saying, yes, I'm really you, I'm really you, it's me, I'm you, I'm really you, and, and trying to fool me into thinking that it's me, and my higher self is sort of going along with it, saying, well, okay, if you want to be me for now, you can, I'll let you run the show, and uh, now I forgot what I was talking about, see? the the Morgellons and the Alzheimer's, you know, I can just imagine what my poor brain looks like with all this aluminum-based um, 
chemtrail gobbledygook that they sprayed into our rooms, all these microwave sensitive, uh, particularly tuned susceptors, this nanomaterial that the, the military was testing, they said, well, gee, if it's not biological and it's not chemical, it's just a piece of material, a tiny, tiny carbon nanofiber that can go into your lungs and then make its way through your lungs into the rest of your system, and your brain and your body, and do its work that way, then it's not considered an illegal weapon because it's not a chemical weapon, it's not a biological weapon, it's not a... You see how we get around that? That's what lawyers are for. Um, Anyway, they they exposed us to so much of this nanofiber, which <clears throat> was, um, it looked black when it was on things, like it would grow, excuse me, it would grow like a black mold almost. It would look like a, a quarter inch thick velvet, line of velvet. On other materials, when they would spray it around, it would, you couldn't see it really, you could take a piece of clear tape and stick it on something and then look at the tape through the light and you'd see this silvery, uh, fine, fine, silvery dust, which tells me if it's silvery, there's metal in it, okay? This was some kind of, uh, it was black and silvery. Interesting material. This material, they were, they're capable of, um, moving it around with some sort of field, a sort of a static field. It's not really electromagnetic. Maybe it's scalar in nature. Makes your hair stand up on end. <clears throat> Makes everybody in the room angry. And this black dust can be pooled together into like clouds. And these clouds can actually knock stuff over or uh, go under the... the, the edges of the walls and like actually move the walls over time <clears throat> excuse me or be used to knock you over we saw it knock over a cup of coffee um, you know it's I believe it's addressable each piece of dust has a number on it that that the computer can pinpoint where is this piece now in relationship to the others and fly them around like a flock of birds in this field somehow this is the level of technology that we're talking about. And once this stuff gets inside of you, what's to keep them from using, you know, terahertz microwaves to visualize through your body this stuff and use it to move around and do like some kind of surgical what whatchamahoozy? You know, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff here. Right? We were talking about technology that is a hundred years far more advanced than anything that you're going to see in the mainstream. There are two lines of technology. There are two lines uh, of everything. There's the, the basic level that the kids go into MIT and, and you know, what they tell you, what they're learning, and their projects, and their next job that they get if they're not working for some top secret, whatever, you know, in the public sector, and the journals that you can read, all the stuff that's not classified. That's the one level of science. That's the level of science that that when you went to school, when I went to school for audio engineering, for physics, for electronics, chemistry, they didn't teach me about scalar energy. They taught me about electricity potential, and they taught me about radio frequency energy, RF energy, the spectrum of RF that includes radio and light and gamma and X-ray and all that stuff. They didn't tell me that if I took two uh, electromagnetic signals and 180 degrees out of phase and canceled each other out, that they would leave uh, another signal, an energy signal, a scalar energy wave, and that this energy wave can travel faster than light, and that this energy wave is a, is a non-Hertzian in that it doesn't oscillate, it's just uh, like solitonic or something. I, I don't know, you got to look it up, it's mathematical. But basically it's like a slinky between here and there that doesn't go wow, 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 wow. It's like a slinky between there and there of energy. And usually if you take these scalar energies that you've created um, and you 
make them from different sources and then you cross them together at the point where they come together they will change back into energy heat light electromagnetic uh and thus you have a, a scalar weapon uh, you know a scalar cannon basically you shoot one of the waves a little faster than the other waves so they both approach the target and when they get to the target uh, you know they they one goes faster and one goes a little slower and so they hit the target in a huge flash of heat and light and electromagnetics and uh, that's a scalar cannon uh, Tesla knew this stuff non-Hertzian now I'm sure there's a way to put information into a non-Hertzian wave you know the other thing about scalar waves is that they can send information over infinite distances without any loss of information quality or quantity um, regular radio frequency waves don't do that you know Lo uh, extremely low frequency waves can go really really far but the density of information is very small uh, ultra high frequency waves are very small they go point to point sometimes they go through stuff or they bounce off of stuff and the information density can be much higher um, I imagine the information density in these scalar waves can be tremendous because it's my understanding that scalar waves are the 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 waves of the universe. It's the way that the creator made the clockwork of our existence go. That these are the things that make the weather go around, and that's why things like harp and ice cat uh, ionospheric heaters can can move huge air masses around and and change the weather you know uh, deep earth tomography basically you're focusing a huge amount of energy off the ionosphere bouncing it down into the earth and picking it up what either what reflects back out or what comes out the other side and by using fast Fourier transformation and computer visualization you get a picture of the densities uh, like an MRI of the earth now if you focus enough energy on the earth why couldn't you move the tectonic plates build up pressure uh, you know this scalar energy like I said the Tesla howitzer is just focus it two beams or three beams out of wax so that one gets there first and the other one they arrive just at the right time and um, you could make earthquakes you could make volcanoes go off hey maybe you can even knock off the sun blow a third of the sun out I don't know um, here's something interesting there's a man named Eric Dollard uh, D-O-L-L-A-R-D I think and he is uh, if he's still alive, uh, a scientist, a technician, electronics and electrical engineer and radio engineer, and he worked for RCA and he worked for uh, some universities. And uh, when they were first learning about the ionosphere and how sunspots interact with the ionosphere and the magnetosphere, how that interacts with the ionosphere, uh, and how that interacts with radio communications that are being bounced off the ionosphere. See what happens is that the earth is round, right? And just a little bit away from there this 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 part of the atmosphere goes all the way around and is full of ions, electrically charged particles because the the uh, sun is hitting the magnetosphere and some of the energy is going through and it's creating a charge differential and this, these ions are there charged floating around in this, this layer you know and uh, because there are a certain size uh, these charges then radio frequencies of certain sizes can go and bounce off of it and if that means that a radio over here could put the energy up and bounce it off the ionosphere and get to a signal over here you know regular radio waves they're not going to go around the earth you know they usually go straight so the bouncing energy off the ionosphere is how radio communication connects to far away things it's common practice and uh, they do it with low frequency medium frequency um, and some high frequency stuff uh, they have ionic sounding devices that beep 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 off the ionosphere so you can see how far it travels. This is common stuff for the for ham radio and, and anyway, this guy Eric Dollard had all this equipment and money and RCA and university and whatever and he was the guy studying the sun uh a bunch of years ago. And lo and behold, you know what he found out? He says that the sun 
is hollow that the sun is not a huge ball of gas pressing down on itself with pressure so that nuclear fusion or fission occurs, that the sun is some kind of interdimensional transformer, that energy is coming from another dimension through the sun, and that the fusion and the nuclear stuff is only happening on the surface where this energy is is burning something, creating you know gas and burning and changing and that that's where the fusion is happening and that we don't know where the energy is coming from and w how the sun works that we don't know we've made up these stories to tell ourselves how it is but his studying it and this is one of the secrets they don't tell us is uh, that our sun is not what we think it is and um, the other thing that's really kind of got me wondering is there's information out there that like a third of the sun the top third of the sun almost seem to have been missing you're looking at this uh, this I forget what it's called but the, the, the thing that takes the pictures of the sun the solar or whatever and you look at it and you can see the sun and there's a whole thing on the top is black it's missing he said Eric Dollar said where the sun spots are the holes in the gas fusion and they're dark because you can see in there and there's nothing in there there's no huge amounts of gas pushing down or pushing down um, I don't know I don't know what to think you know what I know about scalar energy and what I know about vibrational medicine and what I know about the nature of the universe and all the stuff that they don't tell us I'm willing to believe it he seems like a pretty smart guy and everything else he's taught me about Tesla and, and uh, sending energy without wires and all this stuff has been right on so why shouldn't I believe him uh, he's a pretty bright guy you should check it out I know I've started a lot of statements and didn't quite finish them and that's because I'm losing my mind you know my brain is not functioning the level that it used to be before they really sh shot it to us they soaked us in so much nanomaterial or, or biological whatever that, that literally yellow stuff was coming off of our skin. Everything we touched became yellow. Our, our clothes had yellow. We wore rubber gloves. They became yellow. Anything we touched was yellow. There was a time when, when my urine was alive. I, I peed into a plastic cup and I held it up to the light and you could see like it was like a soda someone had shook up and all the bubbles pop and these things shooting everywhere but there were creatures shooting out of my urine and I'm holding it up to the light and I'm looking at it and the plastic cup that it's in begins to melt dissolve and the urine starts dripping on the floor and I'm like my god and I run to the bathroom of course throw it and clean it up but how many of you have had urine that has leaping jumping creatures that melts plastic cups like it's nothing during that period of time we had things shooting off of us that would make streaks and cuts in the glass and the mirrors and the glass of the room they had these marks like these things were leeching on and eating the the silicon or something you know we would walk down the street with these plastic shopping bags with our stuff in it and they would shred <laughs> and everything would fall on the ground they would shred you'd be holding this a bag of uh, you know that sounds to me like nano assemblers you know nanotechnology taking whatever material it can to self replicate and self assemble um we had these things inside of us outside of us i don't know anyway i've said a lot it's a lot to listen to Thank you all. God bless you all for being there. And uh, let's pray for each other. Um, oh, the one other thing that, that's important is when I was wondering why am I a targeted individual? Why am I a targeted individual? And I thought, oh, because I'm a failure. Yeah, they had me believing that I was unlovable, that I was human garbage, that I was not worthy of compassion or care. And that's not true. I know this now. So why did they do it? Was it because I'm um, easily expendable? Was it because I don't have any friends or family or I don't have any money or I don't? Ha no, I don't think those are the main reasons. I think the main reasons are far more interesting. 
I believe that targeted individuals are special, that we are the special ones, that we are the ones that could save this planet, and that they have somehow looked into the future or something and saw that we were going to do something that was going to affect something that was going to change people's attitudes and behaviors and they got in the way and they made sure that, that our whole lives we were you know downtrodden and enslaved um, I don't think that we're merely just test subjects there's more going on here uh, we have the ability to change reality this is is happening you know it may not be that I can think about it and blink my eyes and make this all go away but there's been so many examples of when I, I think about something and I pray for something and and it happens you know and so I have to wonder what's truly going on here you know um, I believe in in the wonder of the universe and I do believe that there is a creator that made us and I do believe that when we die we have a soul that will continue on and we will meet that creator and we will answer for our deeds and our thoughts and our, our emotions our hearts you know and that somehow these beings the ones that we see when we die they live in a place that's outside of the linear uh, function of time and so that they can look ahead and they can look back and they can see our choices um, somehow it's recorded and, and uh, there's a lot of mysteries and there's a lot of people trying to push the mysteries around and make their own use out of them you know um, all this ancient alien stuff there's a serious agenda uh, put people in touch with this end times uh, alien agenda and the rapture and all this stuff now it may well be true you know, if if our Savior is coming back and and all that stuff is going to happen, then hallelujah, we got nothing to worry about. You know, just let it be. But if these people, these hybrids, these people who have allowed evil to control them, or or maybe they made a pact with it, or they were consecrated to evil as children, uh, this stuff happens. Traumatic abuse and preparing a person to be a vessel for some demonic entity happens. Now, whether you believe it or not, there's plenty of people who do believe it and work as though it's real. And my personal experience, although I didn't believe this stuff before, is I have to believe it now because I've experienced it. Um, you know whether we're actually in the end times or whether these people are pushing end times prophecy on us through technology in order to you know depopulate and start over again and make their negative polarity universe or whatever it is they think they're gonna do uh, create a race of beings that are not capable of the things that we're capable of you know, I think that that's what we've been fooled into believing that you can't do this, you can't do that because the world doesn't work that way. You're not able to fly, you can't levitate, you can't uh, manifest objects, you can't uh, create situations that that are you know you can't bring joy and love to the world, and that your enlightenment isn't going to help anyone else. They tell us these things over and over. And when we don't believe, we can't. When we believe, then we have much more power. And I believe that we have much more power than they want us to believe. You see? They're, they're so busy enslaving, 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 and taking away, and training, and programming us to compete with each other, and fear one another, and hate one another, and hurt one another. Oh. I mean, look what they've done to me. What did I do to them? Nothing. I just was, you know... They almost fooled me again this time into being a, a, an evil, horrible, murderous, angry, bitter. I don't want to be that, see? I really don't want to. And 
and it's very important that we we work to accept these horrible things and i know that's the most difficult thing in the world you know without without a connection to your without a spiritual connection to a higher power i don't know how anybody can do this you know without community without one another without people friends that you can trust and know that they're going to be there for you and you're going to be there for them that's a hard thing to get to you know but without this stuff without uh compassion and community and and we're not going to make it you know uh i'm not afraid well i'm afraid but i'm not uh i hope that i'm not going to be afraid to stand up for what i believe in when the time comes even if it means my death you know this is what they want they want people who aren't willing to stand up for what they believe in no matter what and they're going to play them off against the people who who are willing to stand up for what they believe in because the ones who are willing to stand up are going to be labeled terrorists and insurgents i mean they're already doing that with the sovereignty movement if you know anything about the sovereignty movement it's uh understanding the law fully and being in compliance with the law it has nothing to do with picking and choosing what laws you want it's uh has to do with common law and god's law you know there's god there's man and below that is the law you know the law of god law of man um and they've got us believing that we're statutory citizens that we are persons that we are the the fiction the corporate fiction that they put on our birth certificate that they, that they use to uh borrow funds against in an investment fund and had it insured against our death as a unit of production they're making millions off of us this is a debt society there's no you know look into this thing the fbi and the police are frightened of these people and the illuminati people whoever's in charge they're saying oh these are the worst terrorists in the world and they'll kill policemen and they'll do this and they'll do that any true sovereignty people that i've met that weren't militant you know were all about following the law and peaceable uh peaceable anyway it's a commercial transaction when a policeman comes up to you and says i'm going to give you a ticket this is a commercial transaction he's trying to serve you a a, a a a you know like you go into a store and you buy something this is a service you're getting and unfortunately we don't want his service and they somehow have fooled them all into believing that they can contract with anyone they want you know when you get a parking ticket this is a contract it's a, you know in fact when you get your car and you go down and register your car if you look up in black's law dictionary the word registration registration means to that it comes from admiralty law when you take your ship full of cargo chattel and slaves into port and at which point you have to register your ship with the harbor master and the harbor pilot whose job it is to pilot your ship into the harbor into port so that you can then unload your slaves uh, cargo chattel and slaves okay when you register your ship you are giving ownership and responsibility for the ship its cargo chattel and slaves to the harbor master so that if he sinks your ship he's responsible for it financially this is a, a commercial transaction when you get into port you then are supposed to claim back ownership of your ship you know from the harbor master so when you register your car what you're doing is you're giving ownership and title of your car over to whoever you're registering it with the government and that is why when they give you parking tickets and they tow your car away and sell it at an auction it's because they own it already when you register your gun you're doing the same thing when you register your child's live birth you're doing the same thing you're giving you're giving control of you're giving ownership of your biological property which is your child to the government and they give you a certificate and since you don't go back and claim reclaim 
this this fictional uh, corporate entity that they make with the child's name, then they salvage it. The law of salvage. This is still admiralty law. And they salvage it. You left it there. You registered it. You know, you register your ship with the pilot master and you walk off. You never come back. What do they do with it? They hold it for a certain amount of time and then they say, this is salvage. It's ours. You know? And then they dispose of it a certain way. They sell it off. It's the same thing that happens with your birth certificate. You are registering yourself with the government who now takes possession of this property since you're not taking it back. This stuff is, is they're really scared about this because any citizen that learns that they don't want to be a statutory citizen, that they would rather be we the people, uh, and begins to understand the law and that, you know, contractual law, you know, that, that you're not obligated to contract with anybody, you know, and that you have this, it's very complicated, and that's why they have the Bar Association, and in fact, my understanding of it is a lot of the laws are actually only made for the lawyers, for the Bar Association, for the legal, you know, the people in the legal society, you know, they're the rules of the legal society, uh, not for we the people. I don't know. I don't fully understand it. Not even close. But uh, there's a very, very uh, famous attorney who said once that everybody who's in prison went to prison because they agreed to go to prison. And what does that mean? Well, it means that by, by stepping into the box, uh, you have given them jurisdiction over you. You know, by telling them who you are, what's your name? Oh, I'm this corporate fiction, Timothy Trespass. You're giving them jurisdiction over you, and they're not teaching us how to how to. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but I know that you don't have to register your car, and that if you're not using it for commercial, uh, you know, if you're just using it for travel, then you have the right to travel on the street without having to have a license or a registration or all these other fees, inspection and all this other stuff that you don't actually legally need this stuff. But it's what the city and the towns and whatever the government uses to make a lot of money off of you. If you look up the laws, a lot of these statutes are put in place just so they can collect fees. Uh, it's commercial law. I don't know, I wish I knew more about it, but I'm telling you that the the, the powers that be that want us all enslaved and on our knees and doing exactly what they tell us without a, a squeak of, I thought I had rights, I thought I had God-given rights. Uh, they don't want us to know anything about this stuff because it's real, it's true, and uh, a lot of what they're, they're pulling over on society is a fraud. I mean, you know, this makes me a terrorist whatever. I heard that they're teaching people in the military that the founding fathers, George Washington and and uh, Roosevelt, no not Roosevelt, Jefferson and, and all those other people, Hancock, that they would be considered domestic terrorists today and they would all be put in prison. Can you believe that speech? That's insane. The reason the founding fathers did what they did have a three branch government legislative uh, judicial and executive was so that no one person no tyrannical king george or any other person could uh, do to us again what they had done to us in england and we didn't want them doing it to us here you know they were taxing us and they give us no representation as to the law that's why we fought unfortunately there was other motives behind it too and Let's not get into that now. I want everybody to know that you can change the world by changing yourself, by changing your perspective, your attitude, and your behavior, and your thoughts. You can change yourself, and by changing yourself, you will change the world, because we are connected. Trust me, there is a point a consciousness tipping point above which you know when certain people reach a certain level of consciousness then it affects many 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 other people if not everyone so the smarter that we are the smarter that we all are 
and it seems as though we're in this place where vibration is increasing in frequency which means that our intelligence should be increasing in frequency which means our emotion you know everything should be stronger interdimensionally uh, I don't know the quickening you know information is coming faster and faster and but that means that we should be uh, you know blossoming growing and becoming more more connected and together and uh, you know I mean if we can if we can uh, I don't know I don't know there's 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 all kinds of things happening all kinds of weird things and nobody's telling us the truth about anything we can't trust the government all the Nazis from World War two came to America there's a secret society there's black breakaway money you know that they, they, they have some plan and it's not a good plan for us I don't know what else to say I wish that I could be living in in a place where I don't have to worry about these things but my role here, I guess, is to tell the truth until they murder me. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know whether I should run away uh, like they did. You know, the few people in Germany who saw what was coming and they were able to get away. Uh, the rest of them didn't. You know, I don't know if I'd even be able to get away. Even if I sold everything I had, I could maybe get four or five hundred bucks and... <laughs> Where am I going to go? You know, I need medication every day. I need housing. I need psychiatric uh, care. I need, you know, medical care. These people have sucked the life out of me. Look at this crap, man. What What is this? They did this to me when I was born, whatever this is. I think they cut me open and did something to my brain. And as I've gotten older, it's gotten more and more pronounced. I was in foster care for four months, hidden away. Uh, my mother was kept, like, on a string, you know, don't sign the paper yet. Are uh, you really sure? And then when they were ready, they made her sign it. So, uh, anyway. I've rambled, I've babbled. I don't know if any of this helps any of you. I hope and pray that that, that it does, you know. All I want is for my existence to A, help other people, and B, to glorify God by doing His will. You know, uh, that may be a simplistic way of putting it, but but that's what I'm learning, that, 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 that something has been there for me uh, through this horrible stuff, and and that's what I think it is. And I want to change myself, and and others and uh, because I know we could have a world that's so beautiful if we just had to stop these false paradigms stop paying for electricity for energy once you stop paying for energy anything is possible and we could have unlimited free energy it would change everything but no, these people, they want to keep us enslaved they want to keep this oligarchic money Satanist system and run everything on fear and it's just horrendous you know I don't know I, I don't I don't like what I'm seeing I don't like what I've experienced and if if what I've gone through is any indication of what the rest of the country and the rest of the planet's gonna go through then folks you know it's time to wake up it's time to teach one another somehow teach the artificial intelligence somehow teach the hybrids somehow I don't know anyway thanks for watching God bless you all I hope I live long enough to make another tape I pray for everyone who suffers God bless us all